Welcome to my 7 Komodo videos in 7 days challenge. This is part 4 of 7 videos. This is not my planned video for the today. I actually had another project I was doing, totally stuffed it up. So in the last minute, 12 o'clock at night, I've decided to make an audio adapter for the Commodore 64. And this is a follow up from a video I did a few months ago about loading Commodore 64 games on CD or potentially from vinyl. Uh, records or from VCR tapes, any other sort of audio device rather than a data set. Of course you can watch that video after this video if you want, the link will be in the description below. So I created the circuit board for this adapter in the easyeda.com website. Um, there's, there's other websites you can use but this is the first one I found so uh, this is what I used. Originally what I was going to do before I actually decided to do this last minute video was I was going to print this out and actually make my own circuit board but because of time restraints what I'm doing is using this design that I sent off to PCBWay uh, about a month ago and they printed it off for about two dollars so I thought well I could use that as a backup I'm glad I did because here I am I'm about to use that backup today and I'll put that design on my Facebook page um, after this video as well so here's all the pieces that I need to have to make this adapter uh, everything I've brought off eBay and total cost was about uh, 10 bucks, maybe 8 bucks all up. That's to make one adapter. That's actually including the PCB board from PCB Way. But what I need to do first, um, oh, this is the actual board here. But what I need to do first is actually to sand off the contacts here. Got this film over it, and I need to actually have those exposed because I need to be able to solder the adapter that plugs into the Commodore 64 onto these contacts. So I'll get that sanded right now. Okay that's come up pretty good. Uh, that'll give me a good contact to be able to solder the connection onto this board. And the connection you need is a 12 pin female card edge connector. I think that's what they were called. You can find them on eBay and of course they look very familiar because they're the same connection that we use on the data set to the Commodore 64. So now what I'm doing is just putting some solder onto each one of these connections. I'm quite annoyed with myself today because this afternoon I started another project uh, with the Commodore 64 and I totally messed it up. And this is why I'm doing this very last minute uh, video right now. And uh, not ideal because I did want to start from scratch but hey it is what it is. So now I'm, I'm going to just melt that solder onto the pins of the connection and I have to apologize in advance for my dodgy soldering skills. I'm no expert at soldering, uh, I'm a tinkerer not a solderer uh, but hey I'll give it a go at least. <laughs> okay well look, look at that it's still connected still in one piece so that's a good sign. So next we're going to put some of the components onto this board and I'll put the list of the components at the end of the video so you can make your own one as well. This is the RCA connections I brought from eBay but unfortunately the size I found from the last one I made of these uh, when I did a te test run of this about a month or two ago it's not quite right for the holes that I made. So what I need to do is now extend the arms or the legs of the RCA connection so I can try and reach the holes and I'll be able to solder the uh, RCA connection onto it. What I did last time I actually filled the holes on the board with solder on both sides and then I just connected the RCA connection that way. So basically it's just sitting on top of a pool of solder and it held last time so hopefully it'll hold this time too. So right now I'm just putting some solder on the bottom side of the board where the holes are and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top side as well. This hopefully will give me a good connection. So what did you guys do on New Year's Day? Um, it's New Year's Day right now of course, well actually it was uh, three hours ago. Um, let me know in the comments below. Did you work like I had to work or did you actually enjoy some time with your family? Let me know. So I'm going to use this third arm to try and keep everything together as well. It saves me burning my fingers this time of the morning. 
So I'm just putting the solder onto each one of the legs. So that way I can actually just sit the RCA connection on top of the board and then just solder it in place. And now for the moment of truth. We should be able to get this done pretty quickly. So I'm just going to tack there I'm just going to tack each of these legs on. Looks like that's going to hold. Yep, that's great. I'll just go around the rest of the board. Done. Now next I'm going to put the capacitor onto the board and I'll put the uh, description of all the items at the end of the video for you as well. There's one capacitor on this whole board. Slide it in here. I always pull it through, then bend the legs over. Just to keep it in place. And just going to put some solder on those legs and then chop them off. Uh, I've only just got this third arm recently. I used to try and balance everything on different items on the desk and then try to solder it after that. Uh, it was always a bit messy and things would fall over halfway through soldering it. So I'm really glad I got this third arm. It does have a magnifying glass as well because ever since I got my concussion, um, my eyesight's gone really bad. I had perfect eyesight beforehand and really bad eyesight afterwards. So that magnifying glass is quite handy. All right, so that's all done. I keep all the resistors in these little packets because they're all named. Uh, the last one I made of these adapters, uh, I've got two of the resistors quite mixed up because one is like 68k and one's 6.8k obviously very easy to get mixed up and just, my other adapter would not work so this time I'm keeping them all in the packets I've tested them all to make sure that actually they are correct uh, resistors in each of the bags and uh, let's get this one connected this adapter is quite simple really because there's only a few resistors one capacitor and then one uh, hex inverter as well that's pretty much it. And right now we're putting in the 68K resistor and there's two of these that go side by side in this position here. So the same principle again, going to fold over the legs, solder in place, chop off the legs, done. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. So now I'm going to put the other 68K resistor right next to it. Let's go for it. So that's done. That looks, that looks pretty good. And now we're going to put the third and final 68K resistor in place. So what could you use this adapter for? Well, I've seen Commodore 64 games on vinyl, but also I've seen them on VHS videotapes. Uh, it's being sold on eBay, uh, obviously on CD as well. And when you're recording them on CD, on CD drive on your computer, you just save them as an ordinary, ugh, I can't even spit it out ordinary audio file and then just plug it into your CD player plug your CD player into your this adapter plug this adapter into your Commodore 64 and Bob's your uncle so that's the final of the 68k resistors now we're going to put in the 6.8k resistor along here uh, oh almost got them mixed up again that's what stuffed me out last time and uh, it took me ages to work out why my adapter last time wasn't working. It's done. Now the next one, I don't actually have any of these resistors available. Uh, the shops are all closed today because it's been New Year's Day and I did start this like at 12 o'clock at night. Um, so what I'm going to do is salvage the resistor, which is a 26K, 
resistor off my other um, adapter I made some time ago. And the funny thing is, this is the exact same resistor I was missing last time I made one of these. And I was meaning to actually buy some since then, but I didn't. And that's everything, apart from the, now we need to do the hex inverter. Now, the last time I actually put one of these hex inverters on, the holes aren't quite in the right spot. I didn't quite do that right. And, oh, wait a minute. No, this doesn't look like the right, no, it's not the right chip. Um, yep, no, definitely not. I just compared it just then. And, no, well, that's strange. I, I brought a bunch of these, obviously, from a seller on, e on eBay. And obviously, one of them is the wrong chip. That's fine. I'll put that aside. And this is the chip I do want. And I'll put the description of this chip at the end of the video as well. And as I mentioned, the, the holes aren't quite right. So what I have to do is a little bit of maneuvering to get these pins into the hole. Just make sure you're also facing the chip this way. The little notch on the end here will show you which way to face it. Well, everybody, that's now complete. Now, the next thing to do is to test it. We'll try it out. We'll see if it's going to work. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And here's the setup. It's got the trusty old uh, City Walkman. Just plug in the jack into the line out or the headphone out. I've got the Rainbow Arts uh, CD edition. It's about 10 15 games on here for memory. I can't remember exactly how many. There's quite a few different types of CD games that were released on the Commodore 64. As they were really trialing it to see if it would work, it didn't really catch on, so they didn't actually continue the process of releasing games on CDs. Bit of a pity though. All right, so I've got everything hooked in. Let's give it a go. Okay, okay, that just had me worried for a few seconds. I saw that the light didn't go on. I thought I'd done something seriously wrong, but I just did something seriously stupid. I haven't plugged it in. Let's try it again. Okay, that looks a lot better. All right, easy process. All you do is push play on the CD player and just load the game as if it was a tape. Okay, it hasn't worked. I'm just going to check a few things out. All right, I thought I might have hooked it up wrong, but I haven't. Well, I don't think I have anyway. I'll show you what I was doing so far. So far, it finds the CD edition, but I can't actually get anywhere past that. It doesn't actually load the game, or the games, or the game menu. So what I'm going to do is, I think it's probably best, I'll just check all the soldering. I'll just check, make sure I put the resistors in the right spots as well. I might have got that 68K and the 6.8Ks mixed up again. I'll, I'll soon find out. So I've checked everything, like the resistors, I've checked the soldering, I even resoldered a few things, and you won't believe it, I had the volume turned down on the CD player. Okay, crazy. All right, let's try it again. After all that, it actually took another 15, 20 minutes, that did. All right, we'll push play. And let's see how it goes. Now the volume's turned up, I'm feeling a bit more confident now, because this should work. I've double-checked everything, and it should at least find the menu 
we got that far before at least and um, speed wise oh here we go that's good news speed wise is it faster than tape uh, is it faster than uh, disk drive the 1541 disk drive I think it is as you'll see from the loading times you'll see right now I'm sure it's way faster than the 15412 with the uh, fast load cartridge I haven't actually sped this up so we'll just see how long it takes to load and make sure it does load there we go there's the menu already so it's pretty fast okay how about a game we'll go to load runner I did that last time but we'll do load runner I do love playing load runner and all you have to do now is to fast forward to the right track just like you would for a song if you were playing a CD on a CD player to play a song. Now I've just pushed the play button. Watch how long it takes to load. Now that's pretty quick, isn't it? Well, there you go. That adapter works. So if you're interested in making it yourself, I'll put the plans on my Facebook page. And um, just after this video, I'll also show you the components that I used as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up before this, with this video. Uh, I really appreciate your time. And also, thank you for the 600 subscribers that follow me as well. I really appreciate your support. Uh, here's the components I used. Uh, everything's found on eBay. Uh, I'll put that design and also the a way for you to actually download it in case you wanted to get it printed off. Otherwise, you can actually make your own PCB boards. Um, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube, and uh, I'll make a video on that coming up very soon. Uh, thanks for watching again, and watch out for my next video. To I would say tomorrow, but it's actually going to be today. Um, and also, if you want to watch my, my other videos, I, it's all about Commodore computers. This whole channel, and I've got videos on old Commodores and new Commodores, uh, something for everyone basically. So check them out, and also if you can, please subscribe as well. I really appreciate your support.